Hello everyone and welcome to this first episode of Inspiring Designs. In these videos, I want to talk about games I enjoyed and try to analyze elements of their design. This aims to share my passion for game design with you and to try and deconstruct this game to see what elements make them work and feel good. This format is strongly inspired by the channels Game Makers Toolkit and Design Doc, which I'll both link to in the description. So anyway, I hope you'll find my views interesting. And without further ado, let's dive into the peaceful world of Flower. Flower is a game developed by that game company that was initially released in 2009 on the PlayStation 3. You play as a small flower petal in the wind whose goal is to make other flowers bloom. And that's it? Yes, the gameplay is quite simple, but that's what in my opinion makes it all the more appealing. And that's my first point on this game. As I said, Flower's gameplay is really simple. You have only one button to press to make the wind blow. When you enter the first level, you have no indication and you're just left contemplating a flower bomb. The game is waiting for the player's natural curiosity or habits from other games to make him press a button so that the flower blooms and the player discovers how to move. The pedal can also be maneuvered using motion control which I think is a great way to make Flower an accessible game for everyone, even if you have never held a controller in your life. That game company co-founder and former president Kelly Santiago has declared in an interview that people who wouldn't normally get near a PS3 controller suddenly relax when you tell them all you have to do is tilt it to move. And I think they really nailed that, even more so because of the fact that there are no enemies, no time limit, or any way to lose your progress. An interesting fact is that no objective is ever explicitly stated in the game. It is entirely yours to find what to do, but you are obviously not left stranding. Right in front of you, you will find small breadcrumbs to guide you. These breadcrumbs are in the form of flowers, which have a shining aura around them to catch your attention. Once you get close to one, you will realize you made it bloom and that it added one of its petals to your trail. Do that with other flowers and you'll quickly find out that your trail is forever expanding. By following the lines of flower, you will soon find patches of flower waiting to bloom, unlocking more and more lines, and so on. And then, the payoff is revealed. Once enough flowers bloom, vegetation around will regrow and become lush again. The big tree will regrow its leaves, the wind turbines will start spinning again, the whole place comes back to life. At the end of the first level, Flower has answered your interrogations about the goal of the game. You have to wander around the level to bring the world back to life, or rather, you wake it up from a state of stasis it was stuck in. Let's follow up with a small part about visual design. Flower first immerses you in its universe with a very striking contrast. The first screen you encounter in the game is a grey room with a grey rainy sky outside the window. The only touch of color is the glowing flower on the desk so that your attention is naturally drawn to it. And once you approach its flower, you enter its level and you witness a cutscene which also displays a vast, crowded city with loads of cars driving by loudly. After this cutscene, you enter the level whose environment acts as a calm and soothing relief from the room you witnessed. Indeed, the goal of Flower's design is to act as an escape from stress. Um, this game would act as an escape from stress and loneliness and motivate the audience to project the positive feelings they got from the game outward towards other people. After each of the three first levels, the room that acts as a menu becomes cozier and warmer. Once again, there is a strong contrast between the lush, colorful nature and the sad, grey, rainy city. But it tends to disappear as the levels go on. This is especially depicted in the second level, where everything starts off grey and then regains its colors once enough flowers bloom.
Finally, I want to talk about the level design and how it helps the scene of the game. Flower trails are cleverly disposed to guide you toward the next part of the level. And what I find interesting as well is that these trails are both the objective of the level, the sort of currency you pick up, and a breadcrumb trail to lead you to the next part. The first level is in my opinion a perfect example of the care that was used when crafting flowers levels. At the end of it, you get this cutscene where the camera peaks over a hill and you see a massive tree in the distance, without any leaves on it. And then, the music fades. That's just an excellent build-up to a really solid moment. As you float over the hill, the music comes back more intense and you see more flower trails leading you to that tree. You, you really feel the importance of this tree and how it has decayed over time. Once you end the level, the tree regrows its leaves and all the grass becomes green again. And each level ends like this, with an impressive reveal moment where you discover the intriguing final structure of the level, whether it be some rock monolith or a wind farm. However, the tone starts to shift after level 3, where a new theme emerges. The third level makes you bloom flowers so that wind turbines start turning again and look brand new again. That the first time you start interacting with civilization, and that's when the menu room no longer looks grey and depressing. Indeed, Flower aims to break the dichotomy of untouched nature versus grey concrete cities. During the second half of the game, you start interacting more and more with the nearby city equipment. In level 4, you discover that blooming flowers makes nearby street lights shine again, and you look more like a spark who brings life back to everything, even electrical equipment. You have once again an excellent build-up at the end of level 4, where some electric poles start looking ominous with blinking red lights. This helps to create a more oppressing atmosphere. And this time, the final structure is a city full of metal pylons, which brings you back once again in a sad rainy menu. That's a very effective way to convey that this city has fallen down and that everything here has decayed. After a morose fifth level, where you discover that you can make the rusty metal pylons vanish to restore the vegetation and equipment around, the final act begins. Your petals bring the whole city back to life, making buildings emerge from the ground, bringing back the colors, and creating a magnificent neighborhood where the city and nature peacefully coexist. And that the falling flower wants to convey. It's an ideal dream where the nature and urban can join together in harmony, Jinova Chen said in an interview. Flower aims to make you feel the calm feeling of being in a large flower field and the spectacular view of a lush landscape. In the last level, you break the contrast that was established prior in the game and reunite the city with its colors. Nature and urban are no longer opposite notions, they became complementary to one another. And with that, we come to the end of this analysis of Flower's design. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it interesting, and I will see you again in future episodes of Inspiring Designs.